<laughs> okay, everybody. Hello. Dosha Maruguat Marushima A Ishuya Head. So I said hello, relatives. My name is Eagle Woman. I'm Mandan Tiradza Rikara from Newtown, North Dakota, just northwest of here, and I work with the Indigenous Environmental Network. I'd like to thank you all for coming here today on uh, Saturday, November 26th, and experiencing this global warming here with us today. <laughs> um, we wanted to talk about a response to the Army Corps of Engineers letter that was received yesterday, as well as some other things during this month of November, which some of you may or may not know is Native American Heritage Month. And we're going to offer perspectives from the Youth Council with Tomas Lopez. We're going to offer perspectives from Continuation of Youth, but also Sacred Stone Camp here with Aaron Weiss, Dallas Goldtooth with the Indigenous Environmental Network. We want to hear from some of our spiritual folks and the spiritual piece which Isaac will bring in for us. Some of the actions pieces and of what we've been framing with Nick Tilson here and we'll end with comments from Tribal Chairman David R. Shamble. We are going to be providing short time at the end for a few questions. The panelists will be available afterwards on an individual basis as they agree for press to visit with one-on-one. -on -one. So at this time I'm going to go ahead turn it over. I'm going to have each person introduce themselves and we're going to start with Hello. Um, thank you all for coming here today. Thank you to my elders for asking me to come and speak on behalf of the International Indigenous Youth Council. My name is Tomas Lopez Jr. I'm from Denver, Colorado. My mother is Sharon Dominguez Lopez and my father is Sanes Tomas Lopez Sr. I am here to talk about the past few hundred years and the many broken treaties that have uh, occurred. We've been lied to for over 500 years and we're here to request that o President Obama honor his word that he made to the Standing Rock youth when he came here in 2014. President Obama, when you came here, you promised that you would protect tribal sovereignty and spiritual belief. You promised to protect our sacred way of life. And here we are today, standing up for that sacred way. You mentioned nothing on your Thanksgiving day. You spoke nothing of us or to us. Many of our youth, many of our council members on the International Indigenous Youth Council, if not all of the members on the International Indigenous Youth Council, have experienced the brutality that has come from the Morton County Sheriff's Office and also the National Guard, from broken limbs, injuries from flash bombs, internal bruising, and the everlasting um, consequences and results of PTSD. I'm asking you now, President Obama, if this were happening to your daughters, Sasha and Malia, would you say something? Or would you stand in silence and let them brutalize your own children? On behalf of the International Indigenous Youth Council and our allies and all youth around the world, we are asking that you step in now and assist us in stopping the Dakota Access Pipeline. Oh. 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 My name is Koas uh, My name is Erin Wise. I come from the Hickory Apache Nation in Laguna Pueblo in New Mexico. And I am here to represent my aunt, LaDonna Bravel Allard, who is the founder of the Sacred Stone Camp. Uh, when my auntie came uh, in April, she told me that her intention was not to set up a camp that looked like this. Her intention was to stop people from putting a pipeline in the place before her son's grave. She said that she wanted to ensure a peaceful resting place for her son, and she did not think that when she started her camp it was going to evolve into this. She's grateful for it. But on behalf of Sacred Stone Camp and my aunt, we went to Washington, D.C. last week, and we met with the general of the United States Army Corps of Engineers and he looked me in the eye and I told him what happened. And I told him what happens to people that are left unprotected. Right now our land is to be left unprotected if we are to leave this space. And 
being a woman that has survived sexual assault, I just do want to say that we are not going to allow that to happen to our mothers. We stand with all women who have been hurt, but we especially stand with our mother who is continually hurt and sanctioned by the United States government that that hurt is a continuance of the hurt that has been brought upon us for the last 500 years. We're not going to stand for it anymore. I also want to say to President Obama that, uh, you know, in light of what Tomas said, the indigenous youth are calling upon the United States government for protection. They're <coughs> begging for people to start caring about them. We have three times the national rate of suicide in any other community. We have children that are killing themselves every single day because they want to be a part of this country so badly, but they are continually ignored. And, you know, my aunt who stands behind, you know, our youth councils here, and who is a grandmother and a mother herself, you know, she does represent the, the, the sacred here, you know, and the children are what we need to protect. We need to think about them going forward. And I think that the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers needs to remember that these are children that we are protecting and that if they continue to support Morton County and the North Dakota State Government, that they are not protecting the children that they are responsible for. We just ask that whoever is watching this that is in power, you remember the children and you remember that we as sacred people, as prayerful people, will continue to make our stand. I'm a Dr. P. I'm back to the day. I'm back to the day. My name is Dallas Goldtooth. Uh, I'm Dakota. And I work with the Indigenous Environmental Network. And I, I first and foremost want to acknowledge all our relatives who travel from afar and also acknowledge our relatives, like the Humpapa Oyate and relatives from the, the Standing Rock Sioux Nation uh, who invited us to this land and we're their guests and say acknowledgments for that. Um, I also wanted to say that we have our relative, uh, our, our sister organization, Honor the Earth, couldn't be here at this moment. Um, they had a representative supposed to be planned to speak, but their, uh, four of their vehicles had all their tires slashed this morning in Mandan up in North Dakota. And so uh, in, uh, their vehicles are incapacitated. And it just demonstrates the, the, the environment in which we are in right now. This letter by the Army Corps of Engineers is just a disgusting continuation of 500 years of colonization and state, uh, systemic oppression. And it's absurd for us to see such a declaration a day after Thanksgiving. Um, but that's the state of the affairs that we are in. It doesn't matter whether you're Dakota, Lakota, Nueta, Sanish, or Cheyenne, this is the land our ancestors are from. This is the land where our ancestors dreamed of our existence, of our songs, and of our future lives. And in defense of those dreams, in defense of our ancestors, we stand strong. We stand strong to protect our, uh, to protect the sacredness of Mother Earth. We stand strong to defend our rights as indigenous peoples. And we stand strong to defend our territorial treaty rights as Ocheti Shakoi Oyate. That's the stand that we make, and we continue to stand by that. This, this movement that you see before us is, is not a movement of hate, but just a movement of undying love for our land and our people in the water. And that's what we're here for, and that's what we'll stick to. So thank you very much. I'm a doctor, 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 I'm Western Sydney, Macha, Echiapi. I'm of the Great Sioux Nation and I represent my Ogala Lakota people. Uh, we've, we've started, the, we brought back the Ocheti Shako and the fire is lit. And there's representatives here from all seven council fires. And our biggest concern. from the 1851 to 1868. 1868, our boundaries go to the Heart River, just north of here. So these are our lands, and we have treaty Indians here who are here to enforce that treaty. And the Army and Corps of Engineers, they aren't our landlords. Because it states in the, as it states in the treaties that 
us as the Ocheti Shakoin, the Lakota, Lakota, Lakota people, we are the wardens of the land. This is our land. They can't remove us. They need to re respect our treaties and respect our rights. In violations of Executive Order 13, six, seven, or 647, that Obama signed himself in 2013, that they have to honor our treaties. They have to honor our rights as indigenous people. And in, in, in the order, executive order 13007, we have a right to be on federal lands in which we can pray. And these lands that we stand on, there are old Sundance grounds, there are old vision quest sites, there's old burial sites here. We have every right to be here and protect our land and we protect our water. Oh. 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 My name is Nick Tilson. I'm from Porcupine, South Dakota on the Pine Ridge Indian Reservation. Um, of Lala Lakota, father of four children. And um, I'm here representing the Indigenous People's Power Project. Uh, we've been here since, since August. Helping, helping the camp ground ourselves in, in nonviolence and in nonviolent direct action. To date, we've probably trained over 3,000 people in this camp in nonviolent direct action because nonviolent direct action is connected to our indigenous values of prayer. And, and we were told in ceremonies that we, need to, we, that we needed to continue to do what we do, founded in our indigenous values and founded in nonviolence and founded in prayer that if we stay nonviolent we stay prayerful that we will win and I would like to remind Morton County remind the Army Corps that we are unarmed we've been unarmed and will continue to be unarmed we are only armed with our prayers or armed with our bodies or armed with our faith that we have and what we're here to here to make a stand and every time that we have done action Every time we have taken action, we have done it based on these values. And we will continue to do it based on these values. But we have been met with aggression. We have been met with violence. That violence has been put upon us. And this eviction notice continues to show the United States government and, 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 and the Army Corps of Engineers and Morton County's ability to escalate to a point of violence. That's not our goal here. Our goal here is to stay peaceful, to stay prayerful, to stay focused on what we're here for. And that's stopping the Dakota Access Pipeline. And, the, and, the, and they, are, they have an option. In the next 10 days, we are calling for them to deny the easement, to permanently stop, to permanently stop the Dakota Access Pipeline through treaty lands. And, we will, and this camp will continue to, be, to, to continue to be grounded in prayer, in nonviolence, in nonviolent direct action. These are strategies that different movements around the world have been taking for generations and we are borrowing from those different from those different movements and combining them with indigenous values that we have here, here today. And so we ask, we ask that Morton County and the Army Corps of Engineers be honest, tell the truth. When they see us coming forward, when they see us at these actions, when they see us making a stand, they see us in prayer, they see us peacefully but they have been acting aggression upon us. And so we are, act, we are asking um, accountability for, that, for, for the violence that's been portrayed on our people. And our, our grounding in spirituality, the reason why there's not guns in this camp, the reason why there's not alcohol and drugs in this camp is because we don't bring those things to Sundance. We don't bring those things to ceremony. We don't bring those things because, because it doesn't align with who we are. That's, that's how strong our commitment is here. And we understand, we understand that our ancestors are here with us, that we're not alone, that, that, that's who we have to be accountable to in the work that we do. And it's part of our very identity of who we are, and that's why we're here. And we will continue to remain uh, peaceful. We will continue to remain nonviolent, and we will do it with strategy. But we want America to know that as indigenous people, we are not victims. This movement exists here because we are powerful because indigenous people have re reclaimed power and because we have been doing it through our indigenous values. Oh. 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 <laughs> I just want to thank everybody. Uh, my name is Dave Arshamble. I'm the chairman of the Stain Rock Sioux Tribe. 
And I just want to thank everybody for their uh, continued commitment, uh, continued sacrifices that they're making uh, to build the awareness that is happening. Uh, when I got the letter from uh, the Corps of Engineers, the first thing I, I read was for uh, public safety. You know, the Corps of Engineers is saying that the um, uh, environment, or the weather, the, the weather's coming, uh, the harsh winters, so they're aware of that. And then the continued um, confrontations that are escalating with uh, uh, between the law enforcement and the uh, water protectors are is becoming more and more unsafe and, and some serious injuries are starting to take place. So because of that, uh, they sent a letter and uh, if they want continued, if they want public safety, uh, the best thing for the federal government to do is to deny the easement. The best thing for the government to do is to uh, step back and, and really analyze uh, what what has happened, what has happened with the environmental assessment. When you look at the environmental assessment, all you're taking a look at is uh, earth. Uh, when you take a, when you go into a full environmental impact statement and review uh, what's happening, you take people into consideration. And what's happening here is uh, people are 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 lost. You know, they're, they're taking um, the environment is being more important than human life. And we have uh, an escalating situation where, where safety is a concern for everybody. We need to, to realize that and understand that. Uh, so to stop this all, what we need to do is to uh, ask the federal government, ask the President of the United States to deny the easement and, and to continue to uh, stand behind his words when he says we need to recognize uh, the treaties. So this, uh, and what I think is happening is they're giving us notice uh, because they want to reduce, the Corps of Engineers wants to reduce their liability when, when something serious happens. They're going to reduce their liability, they're going to push it off onto somebody else. So they sent this letter out, not just to me, but to all the Great Plains tribes. Uh, all the Great Plains tribes got this letter, so uh, the responsibility of what takes place, uh, and I'm not worried about it because I know What's happening here is um, in prayer, it's in peace. And as long as we continue to stay in prayer and in peace, uh, we can accomplish a lot of things in life. As long as we stay united and with prayer, um, there's, there's nothing that we can uh, accomplish. So it's, it's really important that uh, we continue to stand together and we continue to be on the same page and uh, put our own self-interest aside. Let's, let's work towards the collective greater good for all. So to date, there are 748 tribal nations across 22 cities standing with Standing Rock. We are asking people, perhaps one of the most important things that they can do they can't be here is to pray. Send your prayers. The power of prayer is amazing. Whatever that looks like to you. We have the ability for people to pitch into our cause here. By going to standwithstandingrock.net Contribute to the tribe. Go to ochetishakowincamp.org and contribute to this camp sacredstonecamp.org if you want to contribute to the original camp. These are places that people can go to get updated information. You can go on our Facebook pages, Indigenous Rising Media, and follow and share the reality of what's happening and not the propaganda that continues to be perpetuated by the Morton County Sheriff's Department and their violent and criminal human rights abuses against peaceful native people and our allies that are simply doing one thing protecting life mini wichoni with that i would like to take a few questions and what i'd like you to do is go ahead and I'll field about three questions and we'll 
if you have it for anybody, direct that to it too. Speak up loud and clear. I'll start with you and I'll come right here. I'd like to just ask this question, Mr. Chairman. Um, has your legal counsel taken into consideration Bobby Kennedy Jr.'s path? The whole approach of the two permits and how they misappropriated the permit request. Secondly, the fact that they're in violation of environmental law, given that only 30 jobs will be created and all this oil is going to China. We continue to look at all legal options and we continue to analyze everything that we can in federal court. And that's the problem is that uh, the federal court has never been good to Indian communities and, and we, we never have a, a successful record. So if we really want to fight this thing, it, it's going to take Ocheque Chaboy to uh, revisit the constitution and constitutional law and treaty law. That's, I think that's where we have our, our uh, best chance because if we continue to wait for federal government, the federal laws, the federal court to rule in our favor, it probably won't happen. Do you think President Obama will institute the... Um, We're going to go ahead and go with one question. Thank you, Chairperson. Hey, Dave. Jordan with the Young Turks. Uh, I want to ask you, this letter mentions uh, breaches of law by, uh, as they call it, the protesters, such things as leaving garbage on the ground, such things as starting fires. There's no mention of the countless uh, war crimes and um, human rights violations by the Morton County Sheriff, as well as private security. Uh, do you think that was a deliberate, uh, you know, uh, l lack of putting that in there? Or do you think the Army Corps essentially is looking the other way? I, I think the first thing that we have to do is be mindful of what we do, be mindful of who we are, to be mindful of where we're at and who we represent. And if, if there is garbage, uh, what are we here for? We're here to protect the water. We should be, be doing what we can to make sure that this place that we're at is kept sacred. And if it's kept sacred, uh, we could still continue to move forward. But uh, as far as the North Dakota uh, police and the uh, uh, state of North Dakota, they have unbridled power to use. And, and they use those forces against all our allies. And it, it's obvious. And the Corps of Engineers is not going to uh, state anything like that. Uh, so we, we understand that. We know that. That, that takes place and we have the evidence uh, we have proof uh, so we're just going to keep moving forward uh, but we need to be mindful of where we're at and what we're doing so that nobody can say that we're contaminating the earth thank you chairman Ojumbo, uh, in your capacity as the chairman of the tribal council are you in fact in the tribal council inviting the water protectors to remain on your tribal land despite the order of the uh, U.S. Corps of Engineers to vacate? Do we, is there an invitation being extended by the Tribal Council? Well, what we have is um, a situation where safety, again, is that concern for everybody. And we know that th where this camp is right now is on a floodplain. So we're doing our best to try to accommodate. Uh, and that's what we've been doing from day one. Uh, we do have a, a location that we're we're trying to establish uh, for safe place. And I understand that uh, not everybody wants to leave these lands with you. This is a uh, sacred place, ceremonial. Uh, but when there is the time, when temperatures are, are untolerable and unsafe, we need to have a place for our guests. We need to accommodate for them so that uh, they're out of danger. And we are establishing uh, a place just like that for them. Uh, the people here and, and you know, we continue to, the Stag Rock Sioux Tribe and Tribal Council continues to uh, support and accommodate for all of our guests and we're thankful and welcome for the support that it has brought and the, the awareness that it has brought. Uh, it's just been uh, overnight it came to this. So there's no way that you can uh, plan or, or do everything to assure that everyone is kept safe. So we end up reacting to whatever the situation is. Uh, what we're doing right now is we're trying to be proactive for when a situation comes when there's a harsh weather. What do you think will happen to the camp if the Army Corps does arrive on the 5th and tries to forcibly evict people? I don't think the Army Corps of Engineers is going to come on the 5th. I don't think anybody's going to. You know, uh, 
the Morton County uh, Sheriff's Department, Morton County Police has uh, uh, what is it now? Uh, they have jurisdiction, proprietary jurisdiction over these lands. Or whenever there's any crime taking place, we're not committing any crime. Uh, if the Morton County wanted to, they would be able to come in and, and remove us. I don't think that will happen. I don't think the Corps of Engineers is going to come in the fifth and try to remove us. What they gave us was a notice that these public lands are, are no longer available for hunting, for fishing, for recreation. Uh, recreation can include camping, but uh, what we're doing here is, is uh, exercising our First Amendment right, and we're not creating any, breaking any laws, we're not violating any laws. So for the, the court, uh, they don't have an armed force or a military or a, a uh, law and order branch. So they'll have to call in somebody else to come in, whether it's the U.S. Marshals or, or the local police. Uh, I don't think that will happen on the 5th. But I, it does, what it does do though, is it helps us start to think about <laughs> mitigation for this area. You know, uh, if it was to happen, uh, we need to be uh, given notice, in advance notice, so that we can assure that a lot of the property is not damaged, is not uh, destroyed. Uh, and and it's, I don't think it will ever be an eviction where forces come in and just push people out. They would give us notice, and I haven't gotten notice that there's forces coming. All I have noticed is that these lands are no longer available for hunting, fishing, recreation. Um, so we understand that. Now that reduces the liability from the Corps of Engineers, and it puts the liability onto the tribe. So as guests, we have to be mindful of what we're doing. Mm -hmm. We can't contaminate. We can't uh, put garbage out there. We have to be. We have to take. We can't be punching holes all over the ground. We have to be mindful of where we're at and what we're doing. All of us, while we're here, and um, we just continue to, to stay in prayer and peace. Uh, and I, I believe that the Creator will hear our prayers. And I believe that, uh, and I'm hopeful that the, the President of the United States uh, takes action and doesn't leave his eight-year term with the disappointing uh, the Native community. I, I guess I want to add on to what Chairman's saying is that, I mean, suggested force removal and state oppression, I mean, this is nothing new to us as Native people, right? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we've been here before and we've gotten through it. This is, we got this. I don't think that, that, that the purpose of, of this letter, I, my personal thoughts is, you know, these are just intimidation uh, statements. These are things to put us into a reactionary space and we refuse to be a reactionary space. Like my brother uh, Nick Tilson said, we refuse, we are not victims in this situation. That this movement that you see behind us, that this, this movement that you see across this world was, was built out of power. Power based on indigenous rights, based on our struggle to defend our rights as indigenous peoples and our ability to self-determine for ourselves what happens to our land, what happens to our water, what happens to our bodies. That's, that's the, the core of this movement. And so we stay focused on that. We don't want to get stuck in, we're not going to, we refuse to get stuck into the reactionary about the what ifs and what ifs and what that, but we are going to be mindful and be prepared for what may come and run through the scenarios. And I agree with, with the, the, the chairman, I think we all agree that, that what that letter, the letter was not like, we're going to raid on this date. It was just a notice and we just be more mindful of that. But we stay, we are staying here committed to our prayer the original intent of that fire that was lit. Mm -hmm. I understand that, that that this is a movement that is based on the, the principles of the Acheti Shot going, the seven council fires of the Dakota, Nakota, Lakota, Oyan. And that, that those principles, that fire is what's guiding us through. And it's that, that commitment and our faith in that fire that's gonna get us through this and that we're gonna beat and stop this black snake. Oh. Oh. Does this mean that the veterans still scheduled and planned to arrive here um, between the 4th and the 7th. Is that still scheduled as planned? As far as, far as we know, yes. The, yes, the veterans, yes. Yes, it is. And the last RSVP count that we got for the veterans that are going to come here is 1,500 veterans coming. Wow. Wow. Right here. So from what I can tell, 
the whole world is watching. How important is that to you, the, the non-native people that are here and the support you're seeing from all over the world? What do you have to say? And, well, I'm not non-native, so I guess I can just speak to the fact that um, as, as a youth and as someone who represents future generations, who is seventh generation, I can just say um, thank you for finally seeing us. A lot of people don't. And um, I'm, I'm grateful every day when I wake up and I look out and, and we stand together and we pray as a youth council and we see all of you coming together for us. That's an incredible thing. We've never had support like that in this country. Please continue to come and support us. Please continue to pray for us. Please continue to remember that we're here. Please continue to educate yourselves. The history that America has been teaching its children is wrong. And we're here rewriting history, reminding everyone who we are, what we stand for, and what we intend to do. And we are taking back our lands. We're taking back our languages. We're taking back our culture and no one will ever take it back or take it away from us again. That's that's something that I can promise you. What you are seeing right now is a resurgence of our power and it will never be taken away from us again. I'd like to thank all all peoples from across the world and uh, of all colors. Personally, you know, I see everyone as a human being. And I see everyone all have a heart. I mean, we all have a heart. We all share that same beating heartbeat. And um, it's, it's opening my eyes more to uh, what I heard a while back was that um, all of us, all of us across this uh, Uchimaka, this Mother Earth, we're uh, nothing but mud. And that is all we're ever going to be. When we all die, Everything that is heard is us. So everyone across the world, and I thank you with, with my whole heart. And if you want to do something, rise. Stand up where you're at. If you feel you can't be here at the moment, do something. Do something where you're at. Show the people that you are in solidarity with human beings. Oh. trying to do is we're trying to build a, some permanent structures that can uh, provide people uh, and, and not um, have to react and use the, the facilities that are here on standing. So uh, we're looking at north of uh, uh, the, the highway that goes into Canada, or the south now we're the standing. Uh, we have 50 acres there for the time and we're, we're planning on uh, building uh, earth mud other permanent structures so that uh, people who would like to come off the river bottom, which we're on now, and uh, set up camp, which at Deshaw or anybody, or we, we um, say that place is available. 
and, and when it's uh, when it's on the reservation, we have the uh, capabilities of utilizing some of our resources uh, to protect them and make, make sure people are safe. Did you say what, what highway These are that gonna is again? These are going to be the last two questions. I just want to add on to that really quick. Um, I just wanted to clarify for everyone, and you guys can correct me if I'm wrong, but I thought that the United States was a free speech zone. Yeah. Oh. 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 <laughs> <laughs> the United States Army Corps of Engineers designating us again another plot of land where we can exist and speak. Um, they do represent the entire government that uh, wrote the whole thing about us having the ability to speak. Uh -huh. I just I just want to say uh, there's not a indigenous person in this camp who has intention of moving not on their own terms. The tribe is making a space because they're taking some responsibility for safety but indigenous people are here to stay and we're not going to move unless it's on our own terms because this is our treaty land this is our ancestral land this is where our people have been for thousands of years that intention doesn't exist between uh, the, in the indigenous people in this camp this letter coming out i also don't know an indigenous person in this camp who's fearful of it either because we're not fearful where we arrived at as a people where we're at right now we came through a lot to get rid of that we went through a lot of healing we went through a lot of ceremonies and what's left is pure love for our land pure love for our people and there's not place for fear in that and so to the army corps who sent that letter i mean the message from indigenous people here is the letter means nothing to us because our purpose here is to stop the Dakota Access Pipeline. And that's our message. Thank you, Nick. Oh. you, and then you're going to have the last question. Oh. The government's given a deadline of December 5th. What happens to I think that you just answered that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It goes on. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay, I just want to <clears throat> acknowledge all the frontliners the ones that made sacrifices, the ones that were injured. You know, let's not forget Sophia. Let's not forget Red Fawn. You know, these are frontliners. These are people that were willing to be sacrificed. And so I just want to acknowledge all the frontliners. I've been coming here since August, and, and each time I come here, it seems like it has escalated. The From the Morton County Police, from lies, from attacking and hurting our people. I used to bring my grandson here. I can't even bring him here because he's so afraid of the police and DAPL. So we need to recognize Red Fawn and Sophia. We need to we need to continue to support them. We need to continue to support our frontliners. Let's not forget them. They are also with us in solidarity. Oh. Oh. So Red Fawn has her court date on Monday. They will be asking people to wear red and stand in solidarity with her. Susie is um, continuing to undergo surgery for her retina, which was injured when she was almost hit in the eye. When she was hit in the eye. And uh, Sophia is continuing to undergo surgeries where they are taking veins and muscles from other parts of her body to reconstruct her arm. They use violent force against us. So I just wanted to give those updates and let Tomas say some words as the youth. The youth started this. The youth mm. ran. They ran in their own community and they were like, we feel good. So what should we do next? And then so they ran to Nebraska and they went to the core offices and they said, we don't want this. They said, we feel good. What should we do next? We're going to run to DC and we're going to reclaim all of this indigenous youth. They started it and it's only fitting that Tomas here gets to have the final words this press conference. Hmm. Well, again, th thank you to my elders for allowing me to speak. Um, the Standing Rock youth were the ones that started this. Mm -hmm. right. And I wish that my brothers and sisters were here right now and we could all speak because their stories are so important. Their stories are the story of Standing Rock. They are what, are, what will go on to the future. These are the stories that are gonna be heard. We, what we are doing here as the youth is we are ensuring that our tomorrow is safe. We are ensuring that our tomorrow still exists, that the next seven generations 
can have the same drinking water and the same air and the same earth that we did today. We don't want to have to explain to our kids one day what clean drinking water tasted like. Uh, to touch a bit on never, what you said about ever have our souls, have our spirits, or have our hearts. Oh, oh. Oh. Everybody, please remember this pipeline is over 1,100 miles long. Yes, it originates here in North Dakota. It also goes through South Dakota. It goes through Iowa. It goes through Illinois. Let's not forget about our brothers and sisters in Iowa that have been fighting constantly, endlessly, tirelessly, and have asked, been asking for our love and our prayers. So everybody, please send much, much love to our brothers and sisters in Iowa that often feel like they're almost losing their battle. Let's let them know that we are standing in solidarity, that we will win this together because one injustice anywhere is an injustice everywhere, you know? So we're in this together. Oh. Get out to everybody, this concludes our panel today. Thank you. Thank you. Oh. 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 Oh.